Hi, I'm Pam from the Billie Jean King Main Library. And I'm Janine from the Mark Twain Library. Welcome to Chapter Chat, our monthly conversation highlighting new books from our elementary and middle school collections, airing the second Wednesday of every month. We will each talk about four new books that have been published within the last six months. So let's begin and we will start with you, Pam. Take it away. All right, thanks, Janine. This is my first book. It's called Betty McGee and the Shark, The Shark Report. And this is a beginning chapter book. It's pretty short, you can tell by that. But this is the story of Benny who's afraid of the ocean because of sharks. But then one day a great white follows him home and he finds out that Mr. Chompers might be a friend, although he really can't play catch because he eats the balls. But Benny has a report to do on ocean creatures and he thinks it would be a great idea to take Mr. Chompers to school so kids can see a real live shark. Well, of course, things don't work out the way Benny planned. But if you want to know what happens, oh, you got to read the rest of the book. I don't want to spoil it for you. So that is The Shark Report and it's written by Derek Anderson. It's a really funny little story. And that's that. Seems really funny. I like this. Yeah. I like his name. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Mr. Chompers. I know. <laughs> yeah. There's a great scene where he's brushing all of his teeth and he uses a whole tube of toothpaste. Oh my gosh. <laughs> they do have a lot of teeth. Yeah. Oh, how cute. How funny. Yeah. <laughs> very cool. Very cool. Okay. So my first book is this one. Ooh. Grasping Mystery. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Girls Who Loved Math by Janine Atkins. Um, this book uh, is in verse, so it's definitely worth it for any reluctant reader. This book has seven chapters, meaning that this book actually highlights seven different female uh, uh, figures in the past. And, and it actually starts all the way from the 18th century to 2016. And so each chapter, it actually goes in chronological order. Um, so it covers major female icons like Florence Nightingale and Marie Tharp. Yeah, each verse lightly touches on each significant figure's life, um, basically like a mini bio. Uh, it definitely highlights their achievements and major struggles and I'm sure you can imagine how you know tough it was and kind of still is for women um, for these women to reach the goals during their points in time so I highly recommend young readers to pick this one up it's a really good light read and you also get to learn something new about each female historical figure so this one is in our children's fiction section. So it's around grades between, I'd say around fourth, fifth. Yeah. Does it have pictures of the real, real uh, ladies? No, they kind of have illustrations in here. Just like small little ones at the beginning of each one. Oh, okay. But as, as you can see, that one, Hertha Marks Ayrton. Pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Right. Yay. So, all right. Well, this is The Lost Fairy Tales. This is the second book in a series called Pages and Company. And this is the story of Tilly, who in book one finds out that she is a book wanderer. Her mom was, and her grandparents are. And she discovers that she can do that also, which means she can wander into books and characters from her favorite books can come visit her. So in this story, she and her best friend, Oscar, who's also a book wanderer, they go to Paris. They live in London. They pop over to Paris to visit his dad and his grandmother. And when they get there, they find out that his grandmother is a book wanderer. And that's how he got his ability. Um, so they decide that, um, they're really told not to book wander because there's some dangerous things going on, but of course they can't resist. And so they wander into some fairy tales and they discover that the stories are being changed. Jack and the Beanstalk, um, Red Riding Hood, 
characters are disappearing, stories are changing, and there's something not so good happening in fairy tale land. And they discover what it is, but we have to wait for book three to find that out. And in the meantime, there's a new librarian, and the librarian wants to bind the books so people can't wander in and out just when they want to. So there's something, as I said, something not quite right. And hopefully, it'll all get resolved in book three. So this is Lost Fairy Tales, and it's written by Anna James. And it's, you know, you, you think about what books would you want to wander into if you could? Very cool, very cool. It kind of reminds me of um, uh, the one that, I think his last name is Colfer. He did Land of Stories. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. it kind of reminds me of that. And um, but I find it funny how a, a librarian is trying to bind the books together. <laughs> yeah. like, is there an evil librarian? Yeah, oh, there no. is. There is. <laughs> Are we good people? I don't know. Are we good librarians? <laughs> oh, okay, very cool, very cool. Um, so my next one is War is Over by mm. David Almond. This one is also in our children's fiction section, but it is um, on the lighter side of reading. Like a, it's, it's a little uh. bit more spaced out. I think it might be more of a beginning chapter book, but it's still a pretty interesting read regardless. Um, so the story is set in England in 1918 and our main character, John, that's him, J-O-H-N, is a little boy who has a mother working at a munitions factory. And she's basically working overtime, double time is what he, was, he would call it. And his father, he barely remembers what his father even looks like, has been fighting in the front lines in France. So every day he's reminded that the war, that this war, even these children are at war with the enemy children in Germany. But John just really, he just really wants this war to be over. He wants peace in his country. He wants peace basically in general because he sees the ramifications of this war, um, especially like when he happens to witness a public beating of a pacifist for protesting against the war and to also promote the safety of the German, of the German children in Germany. Um, he kind of noticed that they aren't at war. If anything, they're suffering. Try not to be, be more sympathetic towards them and don't, you know, don't feed these children, these English children, the lies saying that they're at war against these kids. So it's very interesting. And John happens to come across a photo of a German boy with his name, with a, the boy's name Jan on it. And it's spelled J-A-N. Of course, in, Germ in German, they pronounce it Jan, like with a Y. And I feel like in a way they might be parallels because uh, if you think about it, the names are very similar. If, you, if like, I think in German, if they saw J-O-H-N, they probably would pronounce it Jan as well. So in a way it's kind of like, it's interesting. Maybe they might be very, very similar kids if they were to ever meet, but turns out that he actually thinks that he might have actually found or saw, seen this boy in his country. Mm. Is he a runaway? We don't know. Is there, are they going to meet for sure? Who knows? But um, yeah, so maybe these two characters happen to be parallels. Maybe they'll meet. Maybe they'll figure out that, maybe John will figure out that he's not the only boy that wants peace. So it's pretty cool. I definitely recommend it. Um, if you know, if you want a quick read, as you can see, it's pretty thin. <laughs> not a bad, not a bad read, but all the illustrations are black and white and they're kind of interesting. There's one that I thought was kind of cool. This is a missile yeah. in the, um, this is what his mother draws him to show him what exactly that she does. And she fills shrapnel in each missile. And wow. See it in there. Yeah. Sounds kind of dangerous. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's interesting, but it's a pretty good read. I would highly recommend it. Yeah, he always writes very serious, very thoughtful mm -hmm. books. 
and a lot of times they're kind of long so it's kind of it's nice to have a short one that's yeah yeah i think okay. i'd like to read that one yeah it's like light but also deep <laughs> it's yeah. Like, yeah you know i think like uh when it comes to a topic like this we kind of need something on the light side of re when, it, when you're reading it, yeah you know? <laughs> yeah yeah well my last two books are about kids who live in zoos which mm. sounds like would be kind of a cool thing and neat thing to be able to do but the first one is called elephant's girl and it's written by celeste remington and this is the story of lexi willow Lexi's not her real name. She doesn't know her name. She doesn't know her parents because when she was five years old, a tornado hit the area of Lexington, uh, Nebraska, and they found Lexi in the zoo being guarded by a young elephant named Naya. And so she's adopted by one of the men at, who works at the zoo. His name is Roger, and he's a very kind man. And they have a full size train that goes around the zoo, so it must be pretty big. And so he's adopted Lexi, and she's very happy living there. She doesn't go to school because the kids made fun of her because they call her the elephant girl. And she's very sensitive about that. But her best friend lives at the zoo too. So um, he's a baseball player, and they just really enjoy a great friendship. But Lexi always wonders, you know, what, who are my real parents? Where did I come from? I don't know. I love my name. I don't know. I'm named after the town. So um, I don't know. But um, she also has, she thinks she's an ordinary person, but she had, has some unusual things that happened to her. She can talk to the wind. She's always mad at the wind because the wind brought her there and the wind can be her friend, but it can also be her enemy. She also gets mind pictures from Naya and they, they show other elephants, possibly Naya's mother. And so she wants to help Naya find her mother too. And she also makes friends with Amanda Holtz. And Amanda used to run the gift shop at the zoo and she took care of the zoo's accounts also. But Amanda was killed in the tornado. So now she's a ghost or as she likes to call herself a misplaced spirit. And so she wants to help Lexi find the truth about her parents and um, how she came to be at the zoo also. So Amanda really helps her, points her toward things that will help her solve that mystery. And so this is a great, it's a very emotional story, but it's a story of chosen families. It has um, Lexi and Roger and her zoo family and also Lexi and Naya um, being friends, an elephant and a girl. And uh, it's just a very wonderful, a different, a very different story with all the way everyone just accepts that, um, oh yes, Amanda the ghost, yes, she's here, we've seen her. And ghosts and different things are just a part of everyday life at the zoo in Lexington, Nebraska. So I really, really recommend this one. Very cool. I didn't realize how much of a fantasy type paranormal aspect there is to that book. For some reason, I thought it was more like, you know, just like, more like realistic fiction, I guess you can say, or drama. Yeah, or and then they, like but they, then they just throw in this yeah. <laughs> ghosts and <laughs> yeah. telepathy. Yeah. I mean, she meets her um, in the forest behind the zoo and the oh. first meeting they have a they have a tea party oh. and she's living in a trailer and she's all dressed up and mm. interesting yeah <laughs> how cute how cute okay yeah. all right i'll just grab my other book very cool all right so the next one that i wanted to showcase was this one what lane and this one you can find in our middle school section here. So as you can see by the cover, this is our main character here, and he has two friends. One is black, one is white. And our main character, this is sixth grader Steven, and he is actually biracial. So he is half white and half black. So he's like any other sixth grader, you know, who enjoys video games, sci-fi, and, um, 
lots of superheroes. He, especially the one, uh, Miles Morales, the new Spider-Man, um, I think mm. the Spider-Verse is what it's called. Um, and Steven has started to become a little more self-aware now, though. Um, he's starting to see, people see him differently. So mm -hmm. before, uh, when he was younger, he didn't notice anything, like no prejudice or any mistreatment for whatever reason. But now his eyes are being opened in each passing day. Um, like when he's the one getting in trouble, when his white friend, Dan, isn't receiving the same treatment, even though mm. they're caught doing the same exact thing. Wow. Yeah, and also when Dan's uh, cousin comes around, he, uh, he notices that his cousin Chad doesn't really like, doesn't really like Steven, doesn't treat him that great. And he's, you know, he's a troublemaker usually, but um, he also notices that he has a tendency to have it out with Steven and makes comments like, you know, they should have kept Spider-Man white, things like that. Um, as you can tell, Steven is going through an interesting awakening, especially when his black friend, uh, Wes, uh, introduces him to the Black Lives Matter movement. Um, Steven at, to, at, this, at this time had no idea what it is. And his, his friend is telling him, you know what, you should probably look it up and see, read up about it, think about what it is that is going on in the world and how it's gonna affect him. So, you know, with all this in mind, Stephen must make some careful decisions and think about basically what lane to choose. So that's this one. And it's also not that hefty of a read. Um, it's a little bit on the thinner side, but the writing is really good. Um, Tori Maldonado, he did a bunch of, uh, he did a, a few books, I think. At least he's known for Light, I think is the book, what it's called. And um, he, he kind of writes and creates dialogue that really, um, that kids are able to really connect with, middle schoolers or upper middle grades. They can definitely relate um, to, you know, how he talks and everything like that. A lot of the kids, the way how they talk. So, yeah, not a bad read. <laughs> wow, and very, very current too. Yeah, definitely. Well, you've given me another one to add to my list. <laughs> Good, I know. <laughs> My book, so book stack is growing, growing, growing. I know. It never ends. <laughs> <laughs> it never ends. Yeah. It never ends. I know. And lots of good books coming out, too. So we will mm -hmm. not run out of books to talk about. Yeah. Uh, my last book is Tyrannosaurus Rex by mm -hmm. Stuart Gibbs. This is part of the Fun Jungle series. And this has the other titles are Belly Up and Poached and Pandemonium. And this is the story of Teddy, who lives at the zoo with his parents. His parents both work for the zoo. And Teddy uh, and his best friend, Summer, who's also his girlfriend, Summer is the daughter of the owner of the zoo. And Teddy is known for being able to solve mysteries, such as who killed that hippo in Belly Up and who poached the koala and different, different mysteries that the security and the police they just can't figure it out. But somehow Teddy and Summer and their friends can. Well, they think that they're, they're in for a treat because his friend Sage, who lives on a ranch next to the zoo, they've actually found uh, the skeleton of a Tyrannosaurus there. And they think, wow, a Tyrannosaurus in Texas? They used to, wow, that's pretty rare. So they're, they're heading over there, but when they get there, there's been a huge storm and when they get there, the skull of the Tyrannosaurus is missing. And it's not really much good without the skull, but they're trying to figure out how in the world could someone move a um, how much is it right here? 500 pound skull without leaving any trace. So that's another mystery for Teddy to solve. But on the other hand, there's a lot of laughter and funny, funny things in this book. Um, their friends, Summer and, and Teddy's, classmates who are not the brightest bulbs in the group in the world they've somehow managed to purchase on the black market a 15-foot anaconda snake and it's got loose in their house 
and it has swallowed their cat. So they call Teddy and Summer because Teddy and Summer have experience at the zoo and they figure they can help them uh, figure out this whole snake problem before their parents get home. Oh, no. And if you've ever wondered what a 15 foot anaconda would look like, I found this picture. And this is a boy in Cambodia. His name is Sambath. And the snake's name is Cameroon, which means lucky. And Cameroon has been Sam Bass's pet since he was um, a baby. The snake just kind of slithered into the village and now it's grown to 15 foot long. And they put this picture on the internet, of course, and everyone who saw it was just horrified that someone would think of this snake as a pet. But this is what, this is what uh, Jim and Tim have in their house with a cat-sized lump in the middle. So they have that to deal with, then they have to find out how in the world or, or where that skull has got to. So as I said, there's a lot of laugh out scenes, especially when Large Marge, who's one of the security guards at the uh, zoo, whenever she appears on the scene, it's just hysterical. But the mystery is a good one, it's not easily solved. And Teddy and his friends, there's a serious side also because they learn about uh, the trafficking of exotic animals, um, such as snakes and certain monkeys, like those cute little capuchin monkeys and birds and even fish. There's a note from the author in the back about um, how this has become a billion dollar industry. So it's a mystery with a lot of fun and laughs and serious side also. So this is Tyrannosaurus Rex by Stuart Gibbs. Very cool. I know that's a series that I really, really want to, I really want to start, especially Belly Up. <laughs> it seems yeah. funny. I'm like, oh, poor hippo, but <laughs> it's a yeah. funny title. <laughs> it is. It is. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. Okay. So my last book is uh, Rick mm. by Alex Gino. This one you can find in our middle school section. And as you can see, we have the LGBTQ or LGB, yeah, LGBTQ label here. So you can kind of tell based on uh, the, the cover and our labeling what it might be about. So this book is a, it's, it's a standalone companion novel to George by Alex Gino, Alex Gino's first book. Um, in a way, it's also like a sequel to George as well. So we have Rick here, he's in sixth grade. And not only is he dealing with a new school year, he's also dealing with discovering what his self-orientation is. Not only is he trying to figure out who he really is, his best friend Jeff is a homophobic bully. Mm. Uh, I know, it's pretty tough. Wow. This becomes a challenge for Rick when he actually wants to join the Rainbow Spectrum Club, an after-school club for LGBTQIA+ rights. It becomes even more of a challenge when he finally realizes that his new self-orientation, which he he later finds out that is asexual, aromantic, a sexual aromantic, <laughs> it's a tongue twister. Um, so he. <laughs> finally realizes his new um, you know, self-orientation and it's gonna be hard to have to tell his best friend, Jeff, about it. Um, in addition to that, things get kind of dicey when Rick finds Jeff actually bullying uh, some of his new friends in the Rainbow mm -hmm. Spectrum Club. So will Rick be able to stand up to his best friend? Will he find the courage to reveal his self-orientation to his best friend he knows you'll have to find out and pick it up and read it <laughs> so, wow yeah it's um it's an interesting read i started listening to it and the mm. author uh is uh is the one that narrates it and yeah they do a really good job so it's pretty good <laughs> oh, great yeah well <clears throat> those are all of our books for this month uh, we hope you have enjoyed them, and if you want to find out how to get them, to read them for yourself, uh, we've got this information on the back here. You can go to 
our website, lbpl.org, and find our book catalog. And then you just type in the words chapter chat 1120, and those books will be there. And our emails are here also, in case you want to ask us a question. Um, yeah, we just hope that you enjoy them and that you'll let us know what you thought of the books. Um, and thanks for joining us. We'll see you next month. So bye till then, Janine. Okay, bye. <laughs>